<laughs> now so what's up guys it is your freaking boy <laughs> but anyway we have a comparison of three of the most uh dopest motherfucking devices out in the game right now um most dopest is a pretty weird way to describe uh three pretty sick phones but Regardless, um, this is pretty cool because um, I've always dreamed of having three flagships in front of me, and it's kind of cool to finally have this. I had to redo the audio recording, so um, unfortunately, it's not going to be exactly what I said in the video, but I'm going to try to get it as close as possible to what I said. Just because my iPhone 11, which I used to record, the microphone on it finally took a crap after all these years. So um, yeah, unfortunately, we're just going to have to go ahead and do a, a dub over. But but yeah, um, so if anything, looking at these three phones, um, I like uh, how we have the Red Magic 9 Pro Plus on the left. I like the boxy edges. Um, I like that they're pretty round. You'll see in a little bit how I show this. I like that on the Samsung phone, we have uh, sharp edges. They are a bit sharp, but they are. They do look sleek. And then we have the iPhone um, on the right. The iPhone's a 15 Pro Max. The, the middle is the Galaxy S24 Ultra, just to uh, clear it up. I know you see it in the title, but just sort of you know show you where the phones are if you don't know which phone is which. Um, but yeah, regardless, I like how the, actually the edges are rounded, very rounded on the iPhone. And it actually is symmetrical to the Dynamic Island you'll see in a second. Um, and yeah. Um, so, uh, just going over specs very quickly on the left, we have uh, 20. So Ram, if you don't understand what it is, it's like a table. I'm um, actually, so here's the red magic box and I'm going to continue to describe these, uh, the specs. So, um, the phone on the left being the red magic nine pro plus, which you will see in a second. Um, it has, uh, 24 gigs of Ram. I also like how, uh, you know, the box right here, it's not focusing. So I apologize about that. It's kind of just the iPhone camera. Um, you know, I had to use it. This is the only camera I had to record all three phones. I usually use other phones to record another phone. Um, but yeah, in this case, we're going to have to make do with what we have. Um, so yeah, so win more games is their slogan, right? And then we have nothing on that side, nothing on that side, but it does look pretty good. It came with a case, came with a 165 watt charger. Um, it looks pretty good. There's their Red Magic logo. It is a, like a mask looking thing. It kind of looks like a transformer type thing, uh, which I think is, is pretty sweet. Um, so we have the Galaxy S24 Ultra. I got the... Um, the titanium violet, um, basically it's purple and I think the purple looks pretty good. Um, my wife happened to pick that out, but I think she did a good job. And then here's the iPhone and it's the, um, titanium blue, I believe. So she did pick purple and blue, pretty solid colors. And then I picked the one on the left being the, uh, the matte black. Um, and yeah, it does. It looks pretty sweet. Um, they both, they all look like pretty clean devices. They're all, they're all flagships. So yeah, let's get into the specs. So on the left, uh, we have the Red Magic Network Plus like rope. Goodness, Pro Plus on the left, like I said, it has uh, 24 gigs of RAM. If you don't know what RAM is, uh, I was talking about it earlier, but it's like a table. If you open an app, um, it's like you're putting something on a table. The more RAM you have, the bigger the table. So clearly you can put more stuff on it and do more things at a time. Um, so yeah, imagine the difference between like a little bit amount of RAM being like a small desk and then a large amount of RAM is like a big dinner table. You know what I mean? You can do a lot more, you have a lot more room more people doing things. That's the idea here. So 24 gigs of RAM on the left. Um, we have uh, 12 in the middle, um, and then we have eight on the right. You can expand the RAM uh, for the both phones on the left. So for the Red Magic, 9 Pro, Red Magic 9 Pro Plus and Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, you are able to expand the RAM uh, eight gigs. So you go from 12 to 20 and you go from 24 to 32. So you can uh, you can do that. It is, it's uh, somebody in the comments had pointed out that it's called swap or whatever. And so you can just pretty much, uh, but yeah, I thought there was like a hair or something or like a crack or something like that. But yeah, so I'm actually booting up the phones right now. You can see, or no, I'm not. I'm actually just focusing on the phone. Um, you, get, you can see a little bit closer. Sorry about that zooming. I do apologize. Um, so on the on the back here we have um, a very nice texture. It is sort of like um, it has like a squeegee sort of sound. Um, it's like it has a pretty cool texture. I'm gonna um, just cut away from the voice or just make it so you guys can hear the little sound um, because the sound is really cool. Um, but yeah, so uh, you have a 50 megapixel camera. You have another uh, 12, and then you have a two. Um, which is pretty sweet. You have a dual LED flash and then a, a two megapixel wide angle. That's what that is. And then the one in the bottom is actually a, a 20,000 RPM fan. 
So I was pretty blown away when I found out a phone had a fan. But if you know gaming PCs or any any computer has a fan, right? So we're pushing phones to the point where they do need fans. They can't rely on the just a phone cooling system or cool metal. We need uh, fans and phones if we really want high performance. We don't want the heat to overtake the phone. And so that um, that's why uh, I think the... Um, the fan is awesome. So yeah, so we have the haptic triggers, 540 hertz. We have right there. Um, they are 90% bigger than the ones last year. We have a uh, we have antenna bands um, right next to it. As you can see, that's that gray line. Um, but I like how the triggers are concave as well. Um, I think they look good. And then we have the vent for the fan. We have the volume rocker. We have the power button. We have the switch that is for game space. If you want to see game space in detail, what that is, um, you can go ahead and I have a full video on it. The next is a, I believe, maybe a microphone or some kind of uh, sensor. But right before that actually is another antenna band. Then that's the microphone like I was just saying. Then we have on the right, we have another um, concave uh, trigger. So yeah, on the bottom, we have a speaker grill. Or excuse me, um, yeah, speaker grill. We have an antenna band. We have USB-C which is nice that actually all three devices have USB-C. We have a, another antenna band, we have a microphone, and we have a uh, micro SD card slot, or excuse me, that's a SIM card slot. Uh, there's no support for micro SD or expandable storage, which there should be, to be honest, because it's a gaming phone. Um, I th somebody was complaining about that, and I think they're right. I think we should have expandable storage. Um, it'd be pretty sweet, but terabyte is a lot of space, so no need to worry about that. Um, yeah, there's the other side of the vent, and then on top, we actually have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, so no audio latency. You can actually get real-time audio. Um, so that's something that I think a lot of people will really value and miss. There's They have not ditched the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, so I think that is really freaking awesome. And then we have a... Um, and then right next to it is an IR blaster. It doesn't come with an IR like a, a remote app, but you can install any kind of remote control app, and you can use that to control your TV. So any old remotes for like CRT TVs or even TV remotes use um, infrared technology. And then yeah, so that's another. Um, I believe that is a speaker. And then yeah, over on the right we have another antenna. And then yeah, so that's that's that. And then yeah, the phone looks good. Um, towards the. Uh, on the back, I didn't mention it, but the 9, if you saw the, the 09, you can go back if you want, but the 09 is actually an RGB light, so it'll light up, and then there's lights in the triggers as well. So on the iPhone, or excuse me, on the iPhone, it looks it's funny that it looks kind of the same, but on the Samsung phone, we have um, three lenses. We have a 200-megapixel lens. We have a 50-megapixel lens and a 12-megapixel lens, and then we have another little a little lens. I don't really know what the little one is, so I do apologize. I'm not too familiar with camera tech, so sorry about that, um, but... We do have um, uh, LED flash, and then those are the sensors, and I think they did a really good job of encapsulating each sensor, making them all look like little quote-unquote cameras. It is a very iconic style um, that I think they're going to continue with Samsung phones because, um, yeah, apparently it looks like a little robot, and I think it's, it's kind of cool, man. They look like eyeballs. It's kind of funny. Uh, essentially, it's kind of what they are, but regardless, yeah, I do like the purple color. I think it looks great, um, and it, it's more of like a, a brush glass feel. It feels a lot like if you have an iPhone like you know 13 and up or even 12 and up, it's the same texture as that, which is pretty sweet. So if you're like you know trying to upgrade from an iPhone 12 or something, um, it's it's the same brushed glass feel. So on the sides we have an antenna band. Um, the aluminum is not it's it's not um, shiny as of course, so it doesn't it doesn't really smudge up or you can't really see the smudges, which is nice. But antenna band we have two sensors up top. I don't know what they are. There's an antenna band up top. There's another antenna band. Then we have a um, what do you call it? The volume rocker, and then we have the power button, and then on the bottom we have a S Pen, which is freaking sweet, and you're gonna see a little bit of S Pen action. I'm sure, sure there's a lot of videos on the S Pen. I don't really have a, like a full video on all the S Pen features, but I do have a full review where I do a little bit more. Um, so if you want to see the full review on either device, I have them. I don't have an iPhone one up yet, but I will soon. Um, but yeah, regardless, uh, we do have a uh, so there's. The antenna band, a speaker grill, a USB-C, a microphone, a SIM card tray, and then another band. Um, the bands are the lines on the uh, device. So, yeah. And then on one side, you're going to see a little bit of a cutout uh, in the metal. And then, yeah. So, looking at the devices kind of side by side, um, they do look pretty good. Um, I do believe I was... I don't know what I was mentioning here, um, to be completely honest. So, I do apologize on that. I had to remove the audio because it just sounded super fuzzy. It sounded like an AM radio when it doesn't have signal. <laughs> and so that was, that was a super huge point of being a straight freaking bummer, my dude. Um, but yeah, regardless. So I think I was pointing out the, or I might pretty soon. So um, I think I was talking about under display cameras. So yeah, on the, on the 
front of the phone. Sorry about the focusing, guys. I really do apologize. It's just the iPhone, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, we have a 16 megapixel camera up front and also smudges. So sorry about the smudges. Um, we have on the uh, Red Magic 9 Pro Plus, we have an under display camera. So there's a front facing camera, but it doesn't really have the best quality. It's a little bit better because these post processing to kind of fix the problems that occur from it being under a display. But even if the, it doesn't matter, the photo quality under a display gets warped. So unfortunately, but yeah, on the iPhone, we have uh, three 48 to 50 megapixel cameras. Um, I apologize if I'm wrong on the megapixels. Um, but they are roughly around there. But regardless of megapixels, you know, I know that I'm getting kind of blasting you guys with a ton of information. Um, each lens is going to be good. An iPhone camera has always been good. It is just a good experience. So no need to worry about any kind of, um, you know, anything that might get you thinking like, oh, he doesn't know like the megapixels or whatever. Like, oh, there's nobody talking about. Like, don't, you know, please don't make comments like that. I clearly know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, I realized that Phones today, they all can pretty much shoot 50 to 50 plus megapixel photos. That's a minimum, which is crazy. It's a huge photo. The lenses are nice. We have an LED flash. You know, we have the sensors you need. It's nice. It's protruding. It is, um, you know, we do have flat cameras on the back of the Red Magic 9 Pro Plus. So if you want something that sits flat on the table without needing a case, you can actually go ahead with the Red Magic 9 Pro Plus. But this one does take nice photos. You can also airdrop something that Android does have, but if you have a, the Apple ecosystem and you want to continue the Apple ecosystem, I just think you probably already have an iPhone. And you're just trying to see how other phones compare because you probably got on some argument online on Facebook or something and you're like, well, let's see these phones in comparison. <laughs> it's like, okay, and so another thing to keep in mind too is um, that, well, actually, okay, so I really like the sides of the phone. That little bar right there cut out is for 5G signals so that the metal doesn't get in the way of the uh, signal. So there's no signal interference. Um, so that's why they have that. They have that on both other phones as well. It's just hard to see. I'm um, actually I don't know if they have it on the Samsung one, but or they have it on the Samsung one. I don't know if they have it on the Red Magic Nine Pro Plus. But regardless, um, yeah. So the rounded edges look cool. So yeah, on the sides we have those uh, volume power on one side. Then we have the uh, speaker grills, uh, two screws, and then we have the USB C in the middle, which is finally awesome. They ditched lightning. Thank you. They finally adjusted. Thank you for uh, to sorry about that. Thank you to uh, Europe for finally getting them to um, change over. It is a long time coming and I'm really glad that we have this. Um, so yeah, sweet. Uh, yeah, so this is a button you can remap, which is a cool feature. Um, I kind of wish they still had the little switch because the switch was awesome. It could tell you if your phone was on silent or not. It was really just awesome. But yeah, we have a button and buttons are easy to press. I really don't agree with this design change, but you can, you know, you can map the button to different things that you want, which is nice. And then you have the volume buttons. And what's nice is the buttons are very stiff. This is what I'm doing. I'm trying to show you that the, bu the buttons themselves, they don't they don't move back and forth or wiggle back and forth. Like on the Red Magic one, um, the buttons are not super stiff in there. They're a lot better than last year's, but they do wiggle a little bit. And so because of that, it gets loose in the thing. And I've never noticed an iPhone iPhone buttons getting loose because they keep it very tight. And I think that companies need to work on this and take after Apple. Samsung does a pretty good job, but they still wiggle. It just It's kind of little details like this that make you feel like the phone is premium. Apple does skimp on the insides in terms of specs. Unfortunately, like I had mentioned earlier, um, I'll continue with the specs by the way. Oh yeah, and then there's actually just the camera up top. Um, it's 16 megapixels, I believe. If I'm wrong, please correct me, but for the most part, then sorry about the smudges. Um, yeah, I'm doing so much, and I really didn't talk about the other the other processors. I'm just gonna show you guys, I guess, like the back of each phone. But yeah, I didn't talk about the other. Um, so yeah, obviously we have the RAM. I covered the RAM. So there's Snapdragon 8 Gen 3s at at the cap of 3.30 gigahertz uh, and then a red core 2 processor which is an ai additional ai processor in the red magic 9 pro plus we have um then just like the snapdragon hn3 in the um samsung phone and then on the right we have a apple a17 which actually caps out at 3.78 gigahertz it is a hex core processor so we have like just to recap quick the most um most important things um yeah those uh just to kind of recap um, sorry, I was going to go on, but I realized my time, um, <laughs> so I'm going to keep it going, but yeah, so on the, on the right, I, I do like the colors, by the way, they're pretty great, but these are all $1,300, but you're getting a terabyte of storage with the Red Magic 9 Pro Plus, um, with the display, you're getting a 1080p display, so that's the only bummer, uh, we have a 2K display in the middle, and then we have the Super, uh, Retina XDR display, which is pretty cool, they all, they all look pretty great, um, and yeah, I was just trying to adjust the light, but it's actually a good time for me to take advantage of this. Um, but yeah, so terabyte on the left, 256 gigs on the right for both of those phones. Um, and yeah, and that's really basically the the foundation. You know, you're really, when you're looking for a phone, if you're a dork and you want to play games, look for uh, 
processor, RAM, and um, yeah. So iPhone makes it easy because it's really only one choice for the, the Pro Max or Pro model. It kind of gives you the idea, so you don't really need to look too far into that. But on the left, the Android phones can be confusing and not everyone knows. Um, and these also, like, just look at this case. Also, look at these phones, man. They're really just fantastic. Like, you're getting a really, really great experience. And I don't want people to uh, just be straight up bummed out or think that they're not getting the best experience possible, you know, because they really are. These are really great devices. Um, they're awesome. You know, if you're a nerd, you want the phone on the left. If you're a socialite, you want the one on the right. That's just facts. That's just kind of how it is. The iPhone is very good because it's compatible with, like, a lot of stuff around. And so are the other devices. But you're going to get more instances where people have you know, things for Apple, Apple devices like iPhones and things in public. And, you know, stuff has Google stuff now, but, you know, Apple was early adopters and everything is, you know, and also it's like if, if Apple has an app and your friends have the app and it's like a fun game, um, it's, it's, you know, you might find it on Android, but the reality is like, you know, you're probably going to find it on an iPhone and everybody having an iPhone. It just makes sense. So, um, but these are the thickness and that um, this is how the devices look right next to each other. You know, one, uh, the one on the left is a little bit curved in the corner. One's uh, the Samsung one is super sharp, and the Apple one is very curved. So it looks, you know, it looks good. Every every phone has its own unique, distinct features that look pretty great. They're roughly they're roughly the same thickness, and uh, yeah, they, it looks good. It looks really good, to be honest. Like I really, really do enjoy it, and I think that it's great. Um, I think that they are great devices, all three of them. You really can't go wrong with either of these guys. I mean, these are the three powerhouses. Of course, you have the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, a great phone. You have the OnePlus 12, another great phone. Then you have the, the Sony um, Xperia 1V, which still has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. But, um, you know, uh, with the Gen 3, we're probably going to get that very soon with the release this year of the Sony Xperia 1 6, which is nice. So, but these are the three phones I am going over other than those, those, if I could afford them, I would, and I would have videos on them, but these are the ones that I can afford, which I'm still pretty happy about because this is like a lot of money. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that I'm at a place where, um, I can do this. So, you know, um, yeah, sorry. I don't mean to, I don't mean to, to brag. Sorry. I'm just trying to be grateful. Um, no, I don't have all these other phones. I have three pretty nice phones in front of me. Um, so yeah, so I'm about to do a boot up, but yeah, hopefully I gave you guys like the basics of just specs into uh, in terms of the front facing cameras, back cameras, um, you know, processor, RAM, storage. Like like if you're looking for a phone that's powerful, RAM, storage, and you want to look at the processor. So that's and anything Snapdragon um, eight Gen. Uh, fill in the blank is going to be good, but the Gen three is the newest. The Gen four is coming up. Actually, apparently it's going to be paired with um, Orion which is like a, I don't know exactly how they do processors, but it's going to be probably bumping the specs up to four gigahertz, which is insane. And uh, if you're going to manage that amount of heat, you really need a Red Magic phone and you need a built-in fan. I mean, at this point, four gigahertz, uh, octa-core four gigahertz processor, that's a lot of, uh, that's just a lot. So, so yeah. Um, uh, of course, on the right, uh, I did show you guys some boot ups. So they are all um, relatively the same. I have some blowware for the Samsung phone, unfortunately. So that is what. <sighs> and I, I believe. Um, so that's that. Yeah, the, I just the boot up times are pretty good. But there is that T-Mobile blowware. So it made it look a little bit slower. They weren't turned on at the right uh, exact same time. But you're going to get a fast boot up. So don't worry about that. Um, it, you know, we're not at a point where phones boot up slowly. They all boot up at a good amount of time. You're not going to be like. You know, uh, before there used to be so many boot up animations and just so much stuff. But yeah, I'm taking off power saving mode. Power saving mode actually is like that super power saving mode can make things last like a day and nine hours. Like if you really need battery, if you're in some situation where it's crucial. Um, I am looking for the power saver. You can see the automatic brightness adjustment and things like that. Um, you see me dinking around trying to find it. Uh, I think it is in the middle. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, you can see the big pill on the Apple iPhone. You can see the camera cutout on this one, but on the Red Magic phone, you don't see anything. And that was what I was talking about with the under display camera. You are getting a uninterrupted display. Um, sometimes there is weird three weird green lines that pop up when it's any kind of ambient sort of setting um, or certain colors will make it pop out on the uh, Red Magic, which is on the left. Um, but still, um, and of course, let me remind you, I am dubbing over this so i don't have like a uh, the script or anything in front of me and i don't like to script my videos because i think it is un inauthentic so if you're, you're going to criticize my videos i would appreciate it if you did not because this is the style that i go for i like on um i don't like to plan for things i just like to go as is i, I think that um you know if you want to experience a youtuber you're going to get their you want to experience their personality and that's my 
it's my thing. You're not going to experience somebody's personality if it's scripted. You get what I'm saying? Like, we're not going to force and fake personalities here. We got to be got to um, be authentic or whatever. I know it sounds cringy, but yeah. So it looks like there's lines on the Samsung phone. Don't worry. It's just because the camera itself can't keep up with the refresh rate, which means it's a pretty high refresh rate. It is a little bit more difficult to see just because of the fact that it's not the refresh rate, sorry, it's the resolution. This is a 2K display. Um, it is look. It did look like it went away a bit, but yeah, still, that's just what that is. You can't see the lines on there. Do not worry. It's the camera itself recording. But yeah, so... Um, so yeah, over here, uh, just take you look at look at them. You know what I mean? They are pretty, relatively the same, but you'll notice that the Samsung phone probably has the best uh, in terms of clarity. Um, the iPhone does have a certain glow to it that you know Apple is very good at achieving. Um, they are good at achieving things like uh, earlier. I could have talked about this, but I didn't. But still, the Apple uh, the iPhone is good at making the phone feel like it's one piece even though it's multiple pieces like the glass doesn't feel like it's transitioning it's metal it just feels like it's continuing with the way that they designed it so shout out to apple for that the uh, samsung phone does feel like it's multiple pieces but it is multiple solid pieces they definitely have the best build material but you do get all the features on the one on the left it is not as sharp corners on the red magic 9 pro plus which i think is actually pretty good because it is a nice balance between them it's not overly round and it's not overly sharp it is a nice middle which makes me go to it every time of course you get the external features like I, that i mentioned on the other one but yeah we're gonna go into some settings and i'm just gonna show you guys i guess real quick i think i'm turning the screen time out off uh putting it at 10 minutes so we are not getting the constant screen timeout and then um yes yeah, so we're getting back to the home screen but of course these devices do look fantastic um and everything is the same you know you have you can put four apps in the bottom i think with some of them you can put five but they relatively are the same thing four apps on the bottom a pull down notification bar up top they are i didn't don't go into detail on the pull on, pull down notification bar um settings and i do apologize about that but basically they all have the same thing you can pull them down it's going to show you notifications then they have more then you can pull them down further and they all have toggles they all have the same toggles you can edit and you can add different toggles which um which is great so i would not be too concerned if you did not see the pull down toggles it's android if you've had an android phone it's relatively the same they're not that different um and yeah so you can obviously swipe down from the top. You can actually do a swipe down gesture on the Samsung phone and on the Red Magic phone. You can't do a swipe down gesture on the iPhone. You have to go up and pull from specific sides. Um, and so, yeah. So if, as you can see, though, I really uh, I think that Apple keeps it pretty clean up top. But I just think that the dynamic island thing looks pretty ugly, especially now that we have phones with nothing up top. As you can see, there's the clear difference. Do you want an uninterrupted display or do you want a display that has some sort of fancy you know, feature that like looks good? It does cool. Like, you know, it's cool with the music and all that stuff. But I just think that the they need to shrink that down or absolutely get rid of it. I just think that this is sort of an excuse uh, to make it seem like a big deal when they finally get rid of it. The Apple does this. They put inconvenient things, but make them seem like it's a cool feature. I just think it's pretty inconvenient, to be completely honest. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm kind of mentioning here how what these phones are for and who they're for. So uh, with the iPhone on the right, like I said, it's it's for people who, who want a phone that just kind of will work with everything. And you can guarantee that you're going to have something Apple related wherever you go. Um, and also in group chats, there's iMessage and people who are social socialites probably don't want to feel like get that stigma attached to them. Like, you know what I mean? There is unfortunately a stigma that Apple has created that probably will take years to get rid of or if it ever does get rid of because I think kids perpetuate it and, and they sort of instill the idea in, in each other that if you have an Android phone, you're like you're poor. It's not as nice as an iPhone and it's just they're all the same amount of money. So clearly that's not the case. And, and yeah. But uh, I just kind of mentioned that because kids get like ostracized for not having blue bubbles, which is freaking insane. Um, I, I it's just crazy to me. I mean, uh, kids are fucking mean, dude. I remember they get pretty mean towards middle school and high school, dude. It's pretty bad. So, uh, but yeah, regardless, um, uh, re, re freaking regardless, my guy. Um, yeah, so this is a phone for the socialite. It's, it's got, you know, and it has everything already, right? And everyone's gonna, everyone that has an iPhone has FaceTime, right? Everyone that has an iPhone has iMessage. So you have those things. You don't have to download Google Meet or WhatsApp or a third party video calling app just to do it. The built in one is what everybody will pretty much have because like 90, percent of people have iphones and don't know anything about phones at all it's like me trying to think of different types of, of laptops i don't i do not know like the top contending laptops i don't i just you know what i mean it's about the same thing and so that's a difficult thing about um when you're competing with an iphone essentially you're competing with a simplicity of choice and something that everybody has and so that's the hard part but you come across uh things that have way better specs so think about it like this uh, the one on the left being the ravage 9 pro plus the one in the middle is uh, that's like an introvert, right? The extrovert is the iPhone and then the ambivert. Sorry, I'm being cringy with the fucking uh, 
personality things, but it, it's completely true. This is really just uh, really how I think it is. Um, you can clearly freaking see my guy that um, I gotta actually check to see if this is still recording. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's still going. It's still we're we're chilling. We're still going. What's good? <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So. This is it's the socialites phone on the right. We have the super nerd on the left that's a gamer, and then we have the one in the middle, the Samsung phone. You want a solid phone that's not Apple because you don't like you're tired of iOS and all its its features are clunky and its clunkiness, and you want something that's a little bit more open. The Samsung one is go to for you is the go to for you. So you have more social features. You have a middle between social and uh, pretty much this is actually good cameras, good build quality. It's a really solid all around device. You have waterproofing, dust proofing over here. You have vents. So it's not water or dust resistant, unfortunately. So you have to really worry about that getting in the, the vents. It doesn't really kill the performance completely, but if you notice a PC get dust over time, it's kind of the same thing. And uh, it's kind of a bummer that you can't really cover these. I've been trying to talk to my case sponsor, Caseborn, um, which are, they're, they make great cases, but I've been trying to get them to come up with a case design that where you can do a little plastic pop down thing um, that will cover the cases uh, or cover the vents when you're not using them and you can put them down. I think that eventually they will do this because this is something that everybody really wants uh, in the comments. A lot of people want this. We just need something to cover the cases. I have a video where you can buy these stickers they're still vented, but they are dustproof uh, for the vents. It does heat the phone up way more. So that's something to keep in mind. And you really need the phone to be vented. But if you are at work, something like construction, you need the, the sides covered. Um, that is a alternative and a way to go about that. So yeah. Um, so if you're concerned about that, that's uh, something you can do. It's just eight, Red Magic 8 Pro Plus dustproofing tutorial. So it's, it's those stickers. They're not perfect. They aren't the most amazing thing, but they're the best thing that I've found. Um, and they're super cheap. I mean, relatively cheap. There, you know, it's uh, everyone's kind of kind of different, but yeah. Um, also, don't uh, please don't look us up and shit with that name. Would appreciate it if you guys would not be fucking creepy. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so you can obviously. Um, I'm just changing the the time uh, or the screen um, sleeping time for that. Um, but yeah, and so um, right apps in the bottom, we have uh, app grids. Everything's basically the same. A lot of people say other phones are confusing and they're not. Like no phone is really that confusing. You can look, you can pull down shit from the top. You can swipe the apps around. You have widgets. They're like, it's the same home screen setup. You actually have freedom to move the apps around. You don't need a ghost app. Um, so obviously everybody talks about customization. I don't think customization is really why you get an Android phone. I think you get it for personally spec power. That's that's what people want that play games. Like I play Call of Duty Mobile but my wife hates Call of Duty Mobile. Call of Duty Mobile is okay on the iPhone, but it's going to be way better on the Red Magic 9 Pro Plus. And it's going to be just pretty much average on the um, the Samsung phone. You're getting a very average experience. It's a good average experience, but the, the Samsung phone is like a good all-around phone. It, has, it, it basically will meet a high quality across the board, whereas you compromise a little bit on the uh, Red Magic but you get uh, way more features in terms of gaming. So if you're a gamer, this that is the phone for you. That thing is the most powerful gaming phone. Uh, and I'm pointing to the Samsung phone because this is a dub over, if you remember. But um, but yeah, so on the left, like I said, um, just a powerhouse, man. Powerhouse, good all-arounder, and then the social light phone. And that's how these things break down. That's why it's hard to compare these devices, and it's hard to actually... It's These aren't... We're, we're not competing for the same things here, right? Like... Like people who go for Android phones are the type of people that will go for a gaming computer. That's the idea, right? So you already are convinced you like Android because what you want is you want to download cracked apps. You want to download games that are in your not you don't want to be restricted to having installed certificates on an iPhone. And if you already have an iPhone and you don't even know what a certificate is, and you don't really care about installing third party apps, another reason to get an iPhone. Um, one thing I do like on the iPhone that I don't get is that animation car racing thing with Family Guy. Uh, American Dad, like, you know, the this, this space one, all all that stuff, like uh, King of the Hill, like that racing cart thing, they don't have it for Android, and I'm really bummed out about that, and there's really no way to actually transfer the game over, so that's something I miss about about iOS, um, just that game, but, I mean, regardless of that, everything else is great, um, and I, every single time, I will go ahead and pick the Red Magic phone. I do use the, uh, I do use the Samsung phone, because I have a Chinese edition, so it doesn't have all the bands required to have um, consistent like it's not bad, but I just want to make sure that I personally have a American phone or not American, but just a, a global phone um, with American bands so it can pick up every single signal in um, uh, in uh, in America, right in the country that I'm in. Um, See, so yeah, I just I just wanted to make sure that 
the phone had that. So that's why I use the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra as my consistent phone just for productivity, really, and just for photos and video recording and stuff. Um, and then gaming, uh, I do like if I really want a game, I'm going on my um, Red Magic phone. And then on the right, if you know, there were times where I was really into BMX and I rode my BMX bike all the time and actually had like an iPhone SE. I was not really into phones at the time. I wanted a phone that was out of the way that basically could airdrop stuff and I could record and it, it was super small. So the phone wasn't going to fly out of my pocket. Like there are very, like people get phones for different reasons, but somebody like, so the idea here is that if somebody just wants a phone that is easy, like you go with an iPhone, you know what I mean? Like airdrop is so useful too. I can airdrop a video that's an hour and 40 minutes long. You can obviously plug in uh, plug in an, an Android phone and probably get faster transfer speeds, but AirDrop is so easy. You can just send photos very easily between each other. iMessage just preserve the quality. Um, Apple said they are supporting RCS, but it's probably going to be a while before they, they bring it in and they're going to have a select few devices. I think they're just going to make it so that it still looks like Android is crappy because they don't allow for high quality photos to be sent. They basically, the videos are just turds, which, which friggin' sucks, man. I remember having uh, the crappy video recording on my Motorola Razr V3 in like third grade. Um, I remember just the stupid video recording. But it was it was fun having you know, the ability just to record video and stuff like that. It's kind of insane. It's weird, it's weird though because... Oh my goodness. Oh man. It's weird that everybody has a camera so everybody can kind of pop out and record everything. And, and yeah, it's just... Um, it is what it is, man. It, it, it is what it freaking is um uh, but yeah so every fun has widgets too right so you see the widgets up top apple has apple has some nice widgets but you're going to get way more with android because android has had widgets since 2008 um since like the first phone and apple introduced it in i believe 2021 or 2020 it was one of those years where they finally introduced widgets but but yeah they apple's philosophy is they kind of just they take forever to introduce things like swipe on the keyboard took forever. You could swipe on a keyboard on Android for years. Like, like Android is more ahead in terms of features, but you still, you just, Apple has this bubble and everybody's inside the bubble. And if you're outside the bubble, everyone looks at you like you're weird if they don't understand phones. And so I understand if somebody caves to social pressure, they're probably going to have an iPhone, but I just think that this, it's an insecure reason to get a phone. I don't think you should do that unless you really just want something that's going to work with everything. These phones work with everything being the two on the left. But like I said, the social life phone, I, I've mentioned this point a hundred thousand times, but that's why these phones are just not really comparable, even though this is a comparison. So clearly you can compare them. But what I mean by not comparable is people are getting them for different reasons. That's the point. I get the Red Magic, Red Magic 9 Pro Plus because I want a gaming beast. I get the Samsung phone because I want something that just has good quality um, good overall. It says a nice build, and it's just a pretty average middle of the road phone where I don't really need to be too concerned. I just need a phone that works. And then I get the phone on the right if I want to um, have stuff that everybody has and just kind of want to be in like the you know the FaceTime, Apple, all that, the Apple bubble. So it is a bubble. Um, it's like the you know in the Simpsons movie where where they put the dome around the city to I don't know why I don't really remember why they did that, but that's how I feel like people are with an iPhone. They where like you, but instead of it being crappy outside the city, it's like a city of gold. You get what I'm saying on the outside. It's like a, it's like they're they're inside and they're thinking that they have the gold, but what they really have is bronze. And you know, you go out and these ones are much better. But but it it doesn't really matter to some people. Some people just want to be a part of the Apple ecosystem, and and that's fine. Um, not for me because personally, I would if I had a choice, I'd always pick a Red Magic phone. But um, I did like I was surprised at how the iPhone felt, and I was surprised at how it looks. It's a good looking phone, man. You know, um. And if you are an iPhone fanboy and you're still butthurt about me scripting the videos, I'm not going to script them. I'm never going to script them. So if you don't like that, uh, you can just kind of do your own thing and find another uh, find another YouTuber to watch. Um, like, I got this comment. There's a reason these videos are scripted. Blah, 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 blah. Like, it's just, just come on, stop. <laughs> anyway, off topic, but still, it's the point. I also wanted to give you guys just a lot of a lot of screen time, um, just seeing the phones, just seeing somebody use the phones, like looking at them side by side. Like that's the thing in real time. You could look at a photo, but you want to see how things just are normally. So in terms of something random, let's let's talk about like refresh rate, screen refresh rate. So on the right we have a variable refresh rate. In the middle we have a variable refresh rate, and on the left we can force 120 hertz. I think you can also lock it via developer options, but you're still gonna have the variable refresh rate on the right. It does jack up when it comes to games. I think Apple does a pretty decent job of doing this. But the 120 hertz lock, I think you probably can do it on the Samsung phone too, but I like locking 
Actually, you can't. So on the phone, you either have um, 60 or a dynamic. Um, but on the left, you can actually lock it at 120 hertz, which I like, and I keep it at 120 hertz. And then I go in the developer settings, and I actually I'm talking about the Red Magic 9 Pro Plus on the left, by the way. You can enable developer settings by going to going to about phone in settings, and you can um, you can tap the build number, and then eventually it'll unlock developer options. If you scroll down, you can say and you can look and you can find animation speed or whatever, and it'll be it'll be at times one. There'll be three of them like right next to each other. Um, transition speed, all, all that stuff. There'll be three of them. Change them to 0.5, and it'll be it'll make the phone much faster. You can actually go in the settings too, and you can do animation speed. So this you can make this thing just snappy, especially with the 120 hertz display. Um, you have the variable for refresh rates on the right, so it's not you don't have as much control on. Uh, I think you might be able to go in developer options and actually enable that, but um, yeah, you definitely don't have as much control as you do on um, the other phones. Um, and so this is what this is about. This is what the phone is about. You have you have so many um, so many things here that are that are great. And uh, and yeah, uh, so on the same, I guess I can go over some quick likes and dislikes on the. I like that there's an under display camera. I like all the gaming features for the Red Magic Nine Pro Plus. I think it's great. Um, I like that there uh, the camera is flat on the back, and I like the fact that you can charge the phone in twenty motherfucking minutes, guys. Twenty minute charging at a fifty five hundred million power battery. We have. Uh, 5,000 million power battery. I don't know if they actually jacked it up to 5,500 on this. Um, if you get the, on this being the Red Ma or goodness, I can talk the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra that has 5,000 to uh, 5,500 million powers might be 5,500. Um, but these are huge batteries, by the way. Like a 4,000 million power battery used to seem huge, if that puts things in perspective. Um, so yeah, but we have 5,000 million power battery and left that charges in 20 minutes. It takes about an hour for Samsung to charge their uh, the battery up, and then um, it's roughly an hour for the iPhone as well. So when we talk about fast charging, the real fast charging is with the the Red Magic phone. Um, and if you get the Pro model of the Red Magic phone, that's the one on the left, just to confirm, uh, you know, if you're still confused somehow, although I've said it about a thousand times. Um, if you... Um, uh, if you get the pro model, uh, which is like the international one, which is like on the global Red Magic website, where it just says Red Magic Nine Pro, um, it uh, it's just the non Chinese variant, but you lose out on 24 gigs of RAM. You don't get that model, and for me, that was a really big deal breaker. So I had to go with the Chinese model. I got the ship through Giztop.com. I'm not plugging them; they're not a sponsor, but I do go to them for my Red Magic phones. I've gotten three so far. I've gotten all of them, or two two of the three through them. So so yeah. Um, yeah, it's great. Um, you know, they're they're great. Yeah, and then on the right, we have a 4,700 milliamp hour battery, um, but Apple's iOS is pretty... It doesn't really drain the battery too fast. It is a pretty good battery. I've heard the 15 Pro Max has a really good battery. Um, and yeah, but if like I said, if you get the Pro model, sorry about that, on the left, it is 6,500 milliamp, hour, milliamp hours. So it is a huge, huge battery. So if you want more battery life and you, want, you don't care about the RAM, uh, which I, I would assume consumes less battery... Um, I would go with the 16 gig model on the left. Um, so I'm actually in settings now. So you can see up top, uh, like, uh, yeah, you can see up top, you can see, uh, the information about like, you know, on the left we have, uh, there's some options you can choose to customize your phone or just like, for instance, the salted fish always on display. They give you suggestions of what you can do in the settings, which I think is actually pretty sweet on the right. We have, I'm going to change it over to, uh, the light, uh, color just because it will be consistent. And then, yeah. Um, I was also pretty tired at this point, guys, so I do apologize. Um, I am talking at 100 miles an hour, so sorry about that as well. Um, but yeah, um, let's see here. So we have all the settings. There's connection settings up top. Um, as you can see, the they're all kind of out in the open with uh, the, the Red Magic phone. They're hidden under connections on the Samsung phone, and they are kind of out in the open still on the iPhone. So it's kind of, uh, it looks very similar. Um, but they are a little bit different, but re realistically you're getting the same thing. So I just kind of power through the settings here. So I'm just going to try and keep up with what I do. Uh, I don't know exactly what I was saying, so I do apologize, but yeah. So like I said, the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, we'll go, but I'm going to show you the connections that they have. So they have Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi calling, Bluetooth, NFC, ultra, um, wide band, um, airplane mode, SIM manager, all that, all that other stuff. They have the extras, you know what I mean? They have every kind of connection you think you might want, uh, is in there. Uh, including i think nfc there's the vpn there's a private dns which i think is somehow i don't really know i don't know if that hides your ip address or the vpn does i don't really know a lot about connections so i do apologize what about that but 
Um, I think the private DNS might be what allows <laughs> schools to control. Um, I actually, I have no idea. I really have no idea about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no freaking idea. Um, but yeah, uh, no worries. Yeah, so going into Wi-Fi, you can see all the Wi-Fi. Oop, yeah, I don't want to look at that. Um, Bluetooth, not doing the mobile network, but I don't know if I should go in there. Mobile screen uh, collaboration. And then, yeah. And then I was trying to just kind of show you guys the rest of that. Um, as you can see, you can pause the video, obviously, at any point to kind of see the different things. And then on the iPhone over here, we have the... The classic iPhone setup, like I don't really go too in details with the settings on the iPhone because it always has been and always will be pretty much the same thing. But I know that these two phones on the left are the less known phones. So I really spend a little bit more time going over that. So multi-screen screen collaboration is when you share your screen to something. Um, it looks like you can have the actual a floating window of a screen um, for like the phone on your computer so you can control it from there, which is pretty sweet. So Samsung also has something similar. Um, but yeah, there's also there's also game mode. There's like a game mode, um, like in game space, you can actually take a USB-C. I think I, I go and get that actually. Yeah, yeah, so you can use these, right? You can use these controllers with each device because the iPhone is now USB compatible. If you've heard of Backbone, it's the same thing. This is a Stadia controller actually on the left and closer to you, um, the one that's the actual controller. And that you can actually, if you still have that for some reason, you need a controller to use for Bluetooth. You can go online, you can update it, and it just switches it over to recognizable Bluetooth controllers. So this is actually USB-C to HDMI. And uh, it's a nice it's a nice thing. It allows me to basically to do um, game console mode. You can plug this into a TV, and it pops up a game console type deal on your TV, which I think is really, really awesome. And this is something that sets this apart. You can play a game on your TV with a controller and then somebody can actually hold your phone and play a, ga a separate game on the phone while you're doing that. You can, and at the fact that it is 24 gigs of RAM will also ensure that there's no lag. I have something uh, called, I have a video on game console mode. I have a video on game space. You'll see game space in a bit. Uh, there's a lot. I do Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. It actually is fortunately coming out pretty soon here, March 11th in 10 days, guys. I know you're looking for that countdown. So if you are watching this and you're, I have a few videos on Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. I know the countdown is getting pretty tense. Uh, and yeah, it'll be global release. I won't have to rely on a VPN anymore. I think that's why uh, the game booster thing uh, is a bit concerned because you don't need to trick it into thinking you're in Latin America anymore, which is nice. I don't know if I'm going to lose my progress too, but we will see. Um, so yeah, so we have, uh, anyway, Red Magic Share, Z, Z Smartcast, NFC, VPN, all that stuff, like I said. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go over uh, over here. NFC is basically like AirDrop. AirDrop uses NFC. It's near field communication. It's like super Bluetooth, almost. Maybe not. I don't know the difference, so I do apologize. Uh, I do know what I'm talking about. Fucking hater. <laughs> Just like somebody, you don't even know what you're talking about, bro. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so obviously there's a bunch of settings here. I definitely sit on the the settings page or whatever. Um, and yeah, so on the iPhone, you know, you have different things like airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular notifications, sound and haptics, focus, screen time. There's general settings. There's control center. There's a bunch in the iPhone. Um, going over, there's connections, connected devices for the Samsung One modes and routines, sounds, vibration, notifications. We have um, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile multi-screen collaboration, connect devices, theme personalization, home screen display. I think I'm about to just go hard into um, just doing the just doing the settings on the Red Magic phone just to save time because it was at about 40 minutes. I don't know exactly when I when I do this, but, but yeah. Um, I think I was explaining what I just explained a little bit faster there. Um, and yeah, you'll see me point to things I just mentioned. Of course, sorry, this is not perfectly synced up. I really wish it was, but I'm doing my best here with the shitty audio. Uh, like, it sounded like an AM radio, and I'm so sad that the iPhone 11 took a crap because this is probably the only video I'm be able to do with all three of these phones for a minute. Um, but you will see individual videos for each of these phones, but at least you'll see all three of them side by side, and you'll at least see some gameplay with Call of Duty Mobile um, because I do do that, which is nice, but yeah. In here, we have uh, connected devices. So there's all those settings that you just saw. If you want me to not talk and you want to see those, you can pause the video. Um, but yeah, here's where I start to power through, possibly. I'm talking about the differences. Yeah, so we have, you know, connected devices, full screen collaboration, all that stuff. We have cellular. I, I read all these already, but you can watch me point if you would like. <laughs> it's pretty great. 
I know. I'm actually quiet now. Shocker. I've been talking uh, nonstop for 44 minutes, which means I'm not actually uh, quiet anymore. So that's great. <laughs> yeah, so shout out to the Samsung phone that I'm actually using to record this on the mic. Uh, this is a mic test for the Samsung phone, which is pretty great. It seems, it seems to be recording it pretty well um, and picking up my audio recent, uh, relatively well. So yeah, good to go. Anyway, um, yeah, I do like how these phones look. I mean, you can't go wrong, guys. Spending $1,300, you're going to get the most in terms of power on the left. You're going to get the most in terms of social things on the right. You're going to get a good middle between the two. Uh, in the in the middle, I, I use uh, I do like the 2K display. I like watching videos on my uh, Galaxy as well, just because the sound is better on the Samsung phone. Um, it is okay on the iPhone, and it is not as good on the left. We have we have different things like we have a DTS sound on the left. We have Dolby Atmos in the middle, and then we have Apple's enhanced audio. I don't know. So here's theme per- and personalization, right? So I took away the theme thing, but you can go in there and there's going to be a bunch of different Red Magic themes. I just took it away because I didn't need it and I wanted to keep it as base Android as possible. So you can go in here and you can customize the lock screen. It looks a lot like, you know, Samsung's and Apple's and they definitely were Apple inspired here. Um, but yeah, so the lock screen customization thing is cool. It feels like a phone jailbreak, to be honest. And yeah, they give you some options. They give you a lot of customization options. So if you get this phone by default, um, go to my full review, and I have actually have the theme app installed for the Redmi Magic 9 Pro Plus. Do not look at the two-month review. People get confused. The two-month review is just personal things that I like about the phone. It's not actually a review. The one that says full review, that is the full review. So you're actually going to get all the specs, everything you're looking for. So there's icons, right? I don't have icons because I installed the theme app. This would open the theme app, but I don't have it clearly. Like I've said 100 times. Animation speed, like I was saying earlier, this was the fast one. Color and shape. Um, that's in the theme app too, but basically you can change up how the bubbles are, like what color they are, and then the shape as well um, looks pretty good. Um, and then the font of the uh, device font or looks good. And then you have a light strip, always on display, and fingerprint. I think the light strip is still available. Yeah, okay, so we can go in there. And you can basically, what light strip is, is it allows you to change the color on the back, like I said, with the RGB lights. Like you see that right there? There's an animation. It's called a pulse animation. Um, in here, it allows you to see where the triggers are at night, which I think is pretty good. And then the 09 at the bottom is a uh, RGB light, so it actually looks like a straight up gaming thing. And the the fan itself will also do that. You'll see in a second. Um, but yeah, so there's you know there's breathing and there's flashing and there's steady lighting up. So I like personally breathing. I've I've kind of switched between them. I like the I just like the different different kind of setups. I think they look really good. Um, we used to have a bit more color variety with with these buttons, but I think they left the color variety up to the fan. But you know, you see gaming computers with all like the nice, um, all the nice things. So you can also have like, you know, it's competitive atmosphere, media atmosphere, notification, incoming calls, calls, charging an analog clock, um, or something alarm clock. I think that's what that was, but, but yeah, so you can set different, different, uh, patterns and you can set different colors for different things right there. So like, let's say you have an alarm and during the alarm you want vibration, sound and lights. Let's say it actually works well if you are, um, if you're, uh, you're deaf actually, because you can have another, I don't know how well it will work. I think you can actually just use a flash for that, but using something visual to wake you up, um, or vibration, you might be able to hear or feel vibration. I don't know. Just, it adds the, the visual experience, which I think is pretty cool for notification. I think, um, and yeah, so all of them also have access, accessibility settings. All of them, um, have nice settings. If you uh, do have some limitations, you are able to do certain things. Also, you can remap buttons on the Samsung phone, or excuse me, on the Red Magic. You can actually have buttons on top of buttons. So like, let's say for some reason your hand doesn't allow you to reach to a certain point. You can actually map buttons to certain spots and change the size of them. So you really, you can actually really go ahead and uh, have a customized experience, which I think is is really awesome. Um, but yeah, let's see here. Um, we have all, of, so this is AOD always on displays. And I actually find one that I really like, uh, uh here in a minute, I think I go back up. Um, or I don't know if I already said it or not, but I was kind of stuck in talking about the accessibility settings, but there are a lot for people who are a bit disadvantaged in certain ways physically. So you don't need to worry about that. But yeah, this is customization stuff. The fingerprint scanner, uh, it allows you to have different animations. And I think I picked the space one because I think the space one looks pretty cool. You have this, this, right? There's all of them. I, and the full review, I go over every little detail. Um, but this is just, so this is just an overall of each phone, um, of course. And then you have the, um, this is like for notifications and I think it looks pretty good. Um, uh, I like the green one. I think I choose the green one. Um, I did the red one. It, that one acts like a notification light, but I think I do the blue one. I don't know what to do. Maybe the blue one. Okay, sweet. So 
yeah, we have that. And that's some theme and personalization. Like I said, go to the other video if you want to see the full thing. Um, but yeah. Of course, we have uh, the home screen settings, uh, which is going to be next. Uh, so we have a uh, home screen mode, icon layout, lock screen, uh, or lock home screen layout. We have app autofill. Um, you can read them. I can't because it's pretty far away, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I can't. My glasses are wonderful. I'm um, actually pretty decent, but still. Assumingly, this is about two inches from your face because most people are watching phone videos on phones, or at least me. I don't know. Somebody might have their freaking card out wanting to watch a video on a purchase and they need to know, they need to know fast. And this is not the video for you because we're 15 minutes in and we still have a good amount of time. <laughs> um, so yeah. But people who want long reviews just seeing the phones this is the go-to. Hopefully my channel is pretty satisfying for you. But yeah, we have dark mode, all that stuff up top. We have uh, sunlight mode. So it'll basically make it so the, the phone is brighter, especially if you need it brighter. Um, then the, I guess the peak brightness amount is something Apple started to harp on. Um, you know, cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just, okay. Um, I don't know. I think Apple did that as a distraction because they were running out of things. So let's make the nits of brightness better, even though before it was completely fine and you could still see in the sun. I don't know. Um, it used to be an issue. I remember in school when I had my one of my phones, I think it was like HTC Sensation. I think it was around that time. Um, I had to turn the phone brightness up and it was sometimes so dark I could not find the notification, the brightness thing. I had to really go somewhere where I could see. It's really kind of like phone in my face. You get what I'm saying? So... Um, so yeah, we have enhanced display mode. I ended up taking that off because it just increased contrast and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, so we have, then we have notification and status bar. Um, so you can obviously, you know, go in. I already did that, my bad guys. And then sound vibration, cool. And then yeah, notification status bar. So we can do app amount, uh, notifications, all this stuff. Um, Yeah, so you can also um, choose specific ones, right? You can have a setting for screen wake up where you can actually go ahead and have it wake the screen up for a notification. You can do home screen badge icon. You can do um, full screen notification style. You can do status bar icons, time format, pull down uh, from the blah, 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 all that stuff. So yeah, you can pause the video and go back if you want to see each detail. But like I said, we got to keep it moving because we're at 52 minutes. So there's ring, vibrate silent you can do um each one the you can do different vibration actually for different uh different apps so that's pretty sweet i think that's actually that might be the sound i'm not entirely sure multi-app volumes is nice because you can change up the volume of one app and then turn on the volume of the other so you're not it's like let's say you need your call over volume in an app you're not stuck to and they uh but like let's say the difference here too is you can turn down let's say you're playing your dual screening apps, right? And you're taking a call. So you can actually choose which game is louder down to detail along with the calls. So, so yeah, so night, night light is on and it clearly turned off that. So I, I go back and just change that very fast. Um, but yeah, there's a reason I'm not really going super in depth with the iPhone um, because it, nothing has really changed in terms of iOS. And if you want a full iPhone review, I will be, I will be doing that, but that's not right now. But yeah, just keep, just to keep in mind guys, the full review is uh, where you see details in phones, but I'm just trying to go over. So I think this was the sound thing, DTS, Dolby Atmos, and then Apple's enhanced sound or whatever it's called. Um, and then, yeah. Um, so there's more sound settings. There's all these cool things, tap and click sounds. There is a low battery reminder sound, ringtone fade in. So you can have it to where it just doesn't blast you. I might need to do that. I like the slow. Uh, so they took away the five degrees of haptic feedback, which is a bummer because the five was actually really, really cool. I think they should go back to that because that was something that was awesome. Low haptic feedback to me feels very good because it feels like I'm pressing a button and it doesn't feel gimmicky. It feels gimmicky when it's super high vibration. So I keep it <laughs> high, vib high vibration. <laughs> so, uh, but had laughs. Uh, if you don't know what my intros are, um, that's what that is. Yeah, so there's there's different things you can do within um, things like IntelliTouch. It'll allow you to you do different gestures for like translating stuff and and all that. Like app blacklisting. There's just a ton of cool stuff like text processing. All that. it basically is telling you what the the Red Core AI two is doing or like some of the things that it does. I think it also the Red Core uh, also does a good job with 
the um, device CPU uh, and GPU control. I think that also assists there. So I think that's pretty sweet. Oh, also speaking of GPU, you will see it when we actually get into the gaming, but I just wanted to go over it right now. Um, actually, I probably could stick to topic. So sorry about that. Yes, yeah, so there's coin fan, right? Coin fan, you turn that on. It has this cool car startup sound. Um, I think that's pretty awesome. And I do fast cooling because it just keeps the fan on rapidly. And I need rapid cooling when I'm doing things like gaming. And it's clear that you just get such a better experience with the phone with 24 gigs of RAM, cooling fan, red core 2 processor, freaking Snapdragon HN3 at 3.3 gigahertz, full control over what the actual clock speed of the processor is. Like you really get it all here, guys. But yeah, like I was showing you, you can actually go in and have um, different animations for the the light and you can actually go ahead and change that up and i just think this is something that's actually really cool sorry it's a little bit blurry um hopefully this corrects it yeah it's a little bit better here so they have the different effects flashing flow i go to flow so it's i like that a lot I actually have that and you can change up the color to different ones like you saw there you can pause it to see all the colors you want um oh that four oh, those ones with four different colors look really good I actually might switch it over to that um but yeah it looks good. I think they did a really good job actually this year of making the fan where the cameras are and the flat camera, no bump is just looks so good. Like this is such a beautiful device, guys. You really can't go wrong. And it's 20,000 RPMs just to remind you that's revolutions per minute. It's a fast ass fan that'll keep the phone cool. Somebody was kind of thinking like, you know, maybe does the fan actually work? The little dinky fan. Yes, the fan works. It keeps the internal parts of the phone very cool. The phone will cool down when it's hot. If the phone is super hot from like charging or something, you can just whip that on really quickly or if you're playing a game that's that makes the phone super fucking hot like there are some games that are console quality that get the phone pretty hot and by one some games i mean one it's like this story kind of campaign shooter i play it in one of my game playthroughs but it makes the phone pretty hot but it, the, the way to always mitigate that is just throw a case in the phone if the phone gets too hot like i have a i have a phone case on my red magic phone that i use pretty consistently because it also gives me space between the screen and i feel like i can sort of it doubles up the concave feeling of the triggers but yeah so we have you know all these features right there's gesture motion schedule power on off accessibility something cool too is actually you can with the red magic phone is you can get alarms while your phone is off so you can actually turn your phone off to save battery and it'll turn the phone on when it knows that the alarm is coming or it keeps track of the time i think a very minimal battery drain um yeah i actually haven't even noticed a percentage go down um at all from that but yeah basically it'll it'll wake the phone up and turn it on but and with the alarm i don't know if the other phones do that but i know that the red magic phone does that and if you're not expecting it you're wondering why like like that does that um i still think it's freaking awesome um yeah and so there's phone use balance features password security apps battery storage all that stuff looks pretty freaking sweet sorry about the um the focus guys i think i look at the camera real quick um Yeah, so also with the displays, there's a touch hertz response rate. I just thought of this, but there is a 2160 touch hertz response rate. I'm actually going to go ahead and um, real quickly <laughs> use one of my phones to look up the touch response rate. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm looking up the touch response rate right now. But yeah, there's password and security, right? So um, app lock, password book, all this stuff. Um, I'm not really going to talk over everything because you guys can pause and read. But um, but yeah, more security settings, app or Android safe browsing, all that stuff. Pretty freaking sweet. We're going to start kind of blasting through this stuff. Like I said, if you want the details, you can go to the other one. So power saver is awesome. You can turn on ultra power saver. That's what I do. But it'll basically make it so you can have 115 hours of um, like 115 hours of time on the phone. It basically turns it into a brick. So if you ever wanted a brick, you can have a brick. It's there for you guys. You can have the $1,300 brick if you really want it. Um, there's no one stopping you from having a motherfucking brick, guys. Just check out that drop test guy. He like makes phones into bricks very fast. <laughs> very fast. <laughs> uh, a $1,300 paperweight is what he turns them into. So that's uh, it's pretty it's pretty great. Um, so yeah, you have apps. In apps, you can actually go ahead and you can see how what access they have you can set special permissions and you can actually see every single thing that the app has accessed you can see the same thing on samsung phones and i do believe the iphone allows it too but i just noticed a level of detail that really stood out to me for um the red magic phone so it gives you just each phone is giving you a level of information that um and control i, I don't know if apple actually allows you and i don't even know if samsung allows you to have control where you can actually set 
like very detailed permissions that the app itself won't actually request. You can request things directly to the app itself, or you can allow different things. Um, I think it's pretty sweet. Um, so I'm looking at the touch response rate. Um, oh my God. Okay. Um, so it's only 120 Hertz on the 12 or on the iPhone. That was uh, around in 2022, but um, 15 pro. I think they popped it up because they realized people care about this. Um, what is the touch response rate? Sorry, sorry, you can kind of see what's what's going on here. Um, I'm, if you're confused as to what I'm doing, I'm looking on my uh, Red Magic right now and. Yeah, I can't find the. Yeah, okay. Apparently, it, I think it's two hundred forty hertz. Yeah, it's two hundred forty for the iPhone, um, for the fourteen Pro. I don't know if they bumped it up for the fifteen, but I do know. The only thing I actually was able to find right now, while keeping speed in mind, was that. But 240, I think it's around 500 for that. But this is 2160 on the left, guys. 2100 motherfucking 60. You can. It's the and what what touch hertz response rate is? Is it basically? Um, uh, it's basically how fast the phone is going to respond when the phone screen is touched. Like so, you touch it, and then how fast does the phone react? So imagine having 120 hertz setting. You have the the super fast touch sampling rate. You have like I mean enabled. Then you have all the all the other things like um, within Call of Duty Mobile, 120 hertz hertz refresh rate lock. So you have all this combined. Like you have 540 hertz for the triggers, which is pretty nice too. You can you will be able to respond so quickly and just destroy people so freaking fast, dude. Like it's not even. It's not even close. I really think I like do pretty well in games because I can just see things well before they happen. And it, it just sounds, it feels like you're hacking to be completely honest. But yeah, so going into uh, the Samsung phone, we have, um, you know, connections, connection devices, modes, routines, sounds, vibration, notifications, display, battery, wallpaper style, themes. We have all that. It looks freaking good, guys. But we're going to go and we're going to do a little bit more on the Samsung phone. So sound and vibration. Sorry if I was talking about this stuff while we were going through, but system sound, notification sound, all that stuff. There's different things you can do for touch buttons. So you can actually change up the style. I like it um, uh, right here. Yeah, so I like fun because the sounds are just so stupid. It's like beep, beep. <laughs> just like I like the the dumb sounds when uh, when you're kind of doing different things on the phone. I think that that's something that Samsung does that's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, you have system sound volume, call vibration, notification vibration, system vibration, vibration intensity. You can do different vibration intensity like you could on the Red Magic phone for notification system, all that stuff. But it allows five, five different degrees of vibration intensity. Awesome. You know what I mean? For different things too. Really just awesome. Um, and then you can do sound quality and effects. So you can turn on Dolby Atmos. I did not have, I did not have Dolby Atmos on, and I really wish I did, to be honest. I, I think they keep these things off. Like Also, if you get an S24 Ultra, you need to go to visual settings. I think you'll, you see that pretty quickly. But um, you can go to visual settings, so you can change it. Change it to QHD, which is um, basically 2K. Um, and yeah, so uh, you can actually have different apps on different things. So let's say you have a Bluetooth speaker. You can choose the... You can choose volume output on different devices. So, like, let's say you want a video um, playing on a speaker, but you want a game playing on your phone. You can you can set different apps to different things, and I think that that's really cool. And you can switch them whenever you want. I mean, it's really really something great. And I think that you can also do um, sound in unison. So, like, let's say you want to play. You know, um, you have a few Android phones that are a few Samsung devices. You want to play one sound simultaneously. You can do that as well. I think that that is something that Samsung does that. And has available that's really cool that kind of adds to the samsung ecosystem i think samsung is dominating with tvs nobody buys like a literal apple tv they have the apple tv thing but you know i do like that you can also just randomly connect to a samsung tv very easily um that's something that samsung has samsung has a lot of devices you can use samsung to connect to like a samsung fridge you get what i'm saying like there's just samsung does have a, a handle in other areas that apple just doesn't touch like a samsung washer and dryer does apple have a washer and dryer no so you are getting way more collaboration like with other devices that are kind of random like a i don't know the other ones a samsung blender i don't know if they do that but <laughs> you 
You could put your iPhone in the Samsung blender. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> just, man, that'd be so good, dude. Can you imagine that? I'm not going to do a video on that. I think I might. See, that's such a risk. You need to have throwaway money for that. That's, that's some throwaway money. Um, but yeah, so we're going into battery. Of course, you can show it shows which app um, does that. There's battery protection, so you can basically make it so that um, you can set it to like charging only to eighty percent or whatever. Um, you can do that on the Red Magic phone as well. They have the option. Um, you know what I mean? And I think I think you can do charge protection on there too. Basically, it preserves the battery only going to eighty percent. But I mean, personally, I'm not going to use a phone past. I usually upgrade. Look, I have three phones right here. You know what I mean? Uh, I have, personally have two because that one's my wife's. But you get you get the point. Like. It's just, I, I'm constantly switching phones. I'm not too concerned with it. But if you're trying to keep a phone for a really long time um, and worry about, like, I don't know how much it protects the battery. It might protect it a lot. It might not. But actually, so you, uh, but anyway, this customization and theme thing is pretty sweet because you can get kind of like, it almost feels like a jailbreak, but it, some of them cost money. I don't have a Samsung account signed in, but you can basically download a theme, apply it. It'll apply to the keyboard. It'll apply to, like I said, like a jailbreak on iPhone, really. Um It'll apply it, and then yeah, you can you can do your thing. It's pretty sweet. But yeah, I was talking about how these are flat, and if it, it's bumping, and then you know these ones have the camera bumps, so they're not going to sit flat. But this one sits flat, especially if you're playing a game on just surface. Um, it's really cool. There's like just the camera bump thing sucks, and I really think that Red Magic killed it this year without having that. So yeah, there's always on displays, wallpapers, there's everything like that. There's icons. There's uh, the whole ordeal, my guy. Literally, the whole ordeal. Okay. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, we have all this other freaking sick stuff, my guy. Um, yeah. So uh, there's the themes and all that. You can't really, you don't really have that kind of theming on an iPhone. Actually, I think you can through that whole like Mac. Uh, is it macros? Is that it? Apple has actually opened up the ability for you to really have more customization on their phones. And I, I really like that. I think it's when, you know, uh, I don't know who's in charge of Apple right now, but they really opened it up to make it feel a little bit more like Android. It is closer to Android, you know, before you in random stuff, like, you know, over the years, like you couldn't download, uh, over the internet via like, you know, Apple, but now you can. So they have improved some things I didn't like, and it actually makes jailbreaking useless on, on an iPhone now. I don't think people try to do it anymore because you have really... Oh, they pretty much just did all the things you could do on a jailbreak on a thing. But speaking of hacking phones, you can root both the phones on the left, and rooting is basically like a jailbreak. If you don't know what a jailbreak is, it basically just gave you root access. Like I said, rooting is basically just... It allows you to have full control of the phone past just what the software limitations are. Um, so, yeah, it's, that's what that is. Uh, let's see how the recording is going. Sweet. Um, okay. Yep. Nice. Yeah, so screen lock type, you have pin, password, pattern, swipe, and none. You have face and fingerprint rec recognition. It, it They do work well. They all work well. Um, they're all fast, like on the iPhone too. Like face unlock and fingerprint unlock is great. I don't know if you can do fingerprint unlock still on the iPhone, but face unlock is pretty good. I'm sure maybe you can. Correct me if not. Um, I'm not too familiar with iPhones, but I do uh, think, but I just, you know what I mean? I just wanted to show you guys comparisons. Comparisons to me also just mean putting the phones side by side because what are you going to see in a store? You're going to basically see um, just a few devices compared, like really just visually. You're going to see the difference. That's why people go into T Mobile and all that other stuff and they just have phones right next to each other. I think T Mobile should actually right here. So permissions and apps in the last 24 hours, you can see what, what apps have requested. Um, and that's the same thing you could see on the left, but Samsung makes it more obvious. But yeah, like I said, in like a T-Mobile store, it'd be pretty cool if they had the big three right next to each other um, as like the, the top three phones. Like, you know, like they just, don't, they allowed you to use them. Um, they had like a setting. If you put a phone a setting for best phones uh, right now, like, um, you know, somebody might freak out over that, but I think that would be pretty sick because people look up top phones and and I don't know, these three come to mind, iPhone, Red Magic, and Samsung. Yeah, these are these are all flagships, guys. So keep in mind, $1,300 is worth dropping on any of these devices. If you're a gamer, go on the left. If you're a content watcher, on the, go on the middle and you like recording stuff. If you are a socialite, go on the right. Yeah, so we have more settings though. Advanced features, you can just do like video call effects, video brightness, all this stuff. There's a lot. If you don't hear me talking, you wanna see what they were, you can go back and pause, of course. Um, you know, there's the digital well-being. It'll just show the battery and what most use apps. And actually, it took two hours to download all the stuff for 
um, what do you want to call it, for Call of Duty Mobile, which is crazy. But fortunately, Warzone Mobile is a little bit more, uh, it's way quicker. The download speeds are insane. Like, you'll be shocked. I'm excited for people to start playing Warzone Mobile too. Um, and I think that it hopefully will be cross-platform like Fortnite is. Fortnite takes the cake right now because you can play on the same server. And I really think Call of Duty Mobile needs, uh, Warzone Mobile needs to be on the same freaking server. They need to integrate the server to the main one. Even if, you know, you're not getting the best, like, you know, even if you suck on a phone or whatever, they should still have the same server because playing Fortnite on my phone that has haptic triggers and then my friend playing Fortnite on his TV screen, I just think it's really cool with his Xbox. Like it's just the ability to do things like this. I just think is really awesome. I also think um, all these have cloud services. You can play, you know, PlayStation now and you can play, if that's what it's called, you can play Xbox game pass, all that, which is pretty freaking sweet. I know we're just sitting on the, um, what do you want to call it? I know we are sitting on the settings thing for a while, but yeah, there's, so there's all the stuff, software update, user guide, remote support, uh, about phone, developer options. Developer options are pretty sweet. Um, they, like, you know, you just download that or you enable that um, by tapping the um, build number in the settings. Like I had said, on all Android phones, it is the same thing. Um, and then you can always find an Easter egg, actually, by multi-tapping the Android version. But this is actually sweet, so you can set the button the custom button and, and this is so cool okay so they did they apple did such a good job with aesthetics and like showing like the iphone in like high detail and then you swiping over and choosing what you want the button to be so for shortcuts that's what it was you can actually have it open like an app or do like a certain command and i think that's really sweet this is something that apple has really done that i think is great you can do focus mode voice memo um i think that that's really awesome i think that this is just cool you know Apple does a good job. There's action buttons. There is display. Um, you can do all that. You can change it from light to dark, all that stuff. You can do this, this, uh, actually this. Sorry about my hand. I didn't realize I was covering it so much. Um, so really my bad on that, guys. Uh, wallpaper, you can do, um, was not looking at the camera. So yeah, once again, my bad. My hand's also kind of in the corner too. Oh, yeah, okay. It's a little bit better. So sorry about covering that. Um, yeah, accessibility, wallpaper, standby, Siri and search, FaceTime passcode, emergency SOS, supposed notifications, battery, privacy, and sound. Uh, the only really cool thing that I've noticed that Apple did recently, which was really nice, is they allowed you to record your voice. It does sound pretty robotic and weird, but if you are losing your voice, you can really just get in like stuff and you can still talk. And I think that Apple does a really good job of this. There are also other accessibility settings, but basically these are all your apps. You can go in for specific app settings. Uh, and I guess Apple just has always done this where they put the apps in the settings um, for app settings specifically. So... So yeah, um, so we're actually finally at the home screens and doing stuff. So now we're going to actually, I think, get to the place where I um, do YouTube. We do a YouTube video, I think. Or I, I just kind of show, like, so you have an option where you can make it so that it's um, an app drawer. I took it off because I personally like just the, all the apps on one screen. I think it looks good. I think Apple's always done a pretty good job with that. But then here I have it so it is more customizable. And you can do that. So you can move the apps around on Apple. You have widgets, all that stuff, right? Like well, They're very much the same, but you can move an app anywhere you want on like uh, the Samsung phone and the Red Magic phone, basically any phone with Android. Whereas Apple, you need to put like a ghost app. So you can do it, but it is a bit of a nuisance. I think hopefully Apple will allow it so you can pretty much move apps wherever you want. Um, and it, you know, if your phone, your hands are tiny, you can do the tiny display mode. But I mean, if you're also have small hands, I'd probably just get an iPhone Pro, uh, 15 Pro instead of a Pro Max. These are more for people with larger hands or someone that just wants large phone screen. They're all 6.8 inches. Um, by the way, they are very giant phone screens. You have all your apps here. This is the app drawer, but you can just swipe up from the bottom on both of those if you enable it, um, which I think is more convenient. You can actually just swipe from the middle too. You can do the notification bar. You can swipe down. All notification bars are relatively the same. The only difference is Apple has uh, uh, separated the um, the toggles and yeah. Um, and you can also just, uh, you know, if you want to clear apps, right, they're all relatively the same thing. I do think I showed this right now. Um, I do remember doing that, I believe. Um, but yeah, so I have all my apps on here and something that I was using this with my main phone. I have like, you know, all this stuff uh, or whatever. It's pretty freaking sweet. Um, don't be creepy and look at the text and stuff, please. Thank you. Um, some creepers definitely fucking, oh, I want to see everything. I want to fucking know everything that Tech Review Tom does. <laughs> It is weird to think about that people get obsessed with YouTubers. I don't think I'm at that point, but I have thought of that. Um, 
bit strange. I don't have enough subs for that, so I'm not saying, oh, everyone's fucking obsessed with me, bro. That's some fucking conceited shit. Nobody cares. They're here for the phones, and that's the point, my guys. So, yeah, go on to my channel. I have a video on uh, the ocean, so I'm going to shut up when it plays, actually. So, hang on. It hasn't played yet, so I guess I don't need to shut up, but I think, yeah, I'm looking for my videos. So, you can see all of them. And then yeah so I, I was on a beach in Florida so I, I open all them up so ready um, I don't do them perfectly I try to but it doesn't work out but still so the one on the left uh, loaded last and then you can just tell the difference between how the colors display so yeah This is also 8K, so, yeah. I think it might be a lower resolution, but still. Yeah, yeah, so as you can see, um, they do look really great. Um, they all have, like I said, different colors. Like, it looks like, and the brightness on the one on the left might be um, a bit of that, a bit of an issue, but, yeah, it really just depends on what you actually prefer in terms of how the phones display colors. It's pretty interesting seeing three different phones that cost the same, how different they show colors. I know brightness affects it, but but uh, still, some are tr more true to life. Some have more detail than others. And yeah, um, hopefully you enjoyed that nice beach video. That was a nice day. It was really nice being out there with my wife, uh, enjoying the nice weather by the ocean. The ocean is terrifying though, because we know 3% about the ocean and your boy is not looking to go very deep in the ocean. I do like body surfing. That was pretty fun. You can see your boy's dad bod. Uh, <laughs> if you ever catch your boy at the beach, <laughs> give me body surfing, dude. Right into those fucking sand crabs. It feels great. And you know, there's so many fucking jellyfish, too, in Florida. It's insane, bro. Like, absolutely freaking lutely insane, my guy. Okay. You can see your boy's giant head. Sick. <laughs> That didn't turn out too well, but I do turn on 4K. Um, <laughs> I made like a SpongeBob, you like Krabby Patties, Don't You Squidward thing, but with Android, it's actually pretty, pretty great. Um, <laughs> boy, I, 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 I. and here I do rotate the phone screens around, and this is what I was talking about the game center or the game space thing um but the actually game console mode this is what this is it's on my tv in my house um but yeah so i try to show all these in landscape kind of what they look like they all auto rotate apple is a bit of a, a bit of a slower animation but i think it's just because i have the fast animation settings on these phones um but yeah so of course take your pick um i was trying to move that back and yeah, I'll be quiet for these. Turning it to 2160p though. Um, yeah, I don't know why the iPhone was being, like I couldn't fucking tap it. That was so annoying. That was really annoying. Boom, 2060p. See, it was just way easier on the other phone. I don't, I don't know why or what I was doing wrong. Maybe it was tapping in a spot where there's no screen. I. Oh boy. Okay, hopefully I make sure that that is fixed. Yikes. There's your boy looking thick, per usual. It's your fucking boy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but this is what I was talking about where you can play different games. Like, I mean, isn't this crazy? This is straight up insane. This is on the uh, Red Magic 9 Pro Plus. Like, the, the phone at, at the very bottom, if you look at it, that's the phone I'm talking about.
Uh, yeah, I'm lining this up. I think I, we are, we're about to play some Call of Duty uh, pretty soon here. Um, but yeah, I think that's the next thing we're going to do. So you guys get to see a little bit of gameplay. Uh, I wanted to do some gameplay because it just looks great. But yeah, this is the app clearing. They all are relatively the same. The card style. You can switch up card style, I think. Um, this one also, for some reason, will lock the app you're just using. And it shows how much memory in the RAM was actually cleared on the left. Um, whereas the other ones don't really let you know. And then I think on the right, it, I don't even think clearing apps really helps. Um, I don't know why. I don't ex Somebody explains as to why. So if you want to look that up, somebody explains it pretty well. I don't remember exactly the reasons though, so I won't go too far into it. But yeah, so this is <laughs> this is where the Red Magic phone is just going to give you so much more than both these other devices. I mean, like this is this is where the Red Magic phone shines. Um, I have Diablo mode on, which locks the processor, which is... Yeah, it basically just it keeps the uh, phone locked at its top performance. So yeah, I'm gonna have to edit the cameras a little bit. I don't know why I straightened that out to be honest, but I did. Uh, everything's kind of on plan, and that's kind of how I've always liked to do it. Um, I know some people are are like, you know, oh man, you should uh, man, you should fix this, man, man, <laughs> you should go ahead and do this, man. Why don't you script your videos, man, man. <laughs> Yo, I'm just surprised I've had all this energy. I tried to do this last night. I got 40 minutes in. And I was just so freaking tired that I just couldn't do it, man. Um, but yeah, as, as you can see, they all kind of like look a little bit different um, in terms of brightness. I think it's actually just screen brightness, which is the difference here. But but yeah, so we got three different accounts. Um, sometimes I don't. I only go on the one on the bottom. But yo, my friends list is full, guys. So I apologize if I haven't accepted your friend request. I wish it wasn't that way, but I can't add anybody else. Um, so I really am sorry. Um, uh, but yeah, but yeah, yeah, actually, so right here, um, I don't really know what I was doing with the Samsung phone, but uh, oh, I was turning the volume down so we can just have the volume on the Red Magic phone. Um, but yeah, so right here, this is actually the, um, this is Game Center and it, this is in-game toggles that are allowed. So as you can see, um, sorry for the adjustment guys. It's kind of just taking up time, but whatever. Um, so we have the... Also, 903 megahertz for the GPU locked out because it has Diablo mode. This is going to just, this can, if you keep this on for every single game, do not do that because this is only for high intensity games or games you really want a ton of performance out of because it does increase battery degradation and just hardware degradation over time. So you don't want this locked. If people say their phone sucks because, um, you know, over time, it's because you're running Diablo mode every second of the day. Most games don't need it, but for the sake of this video, I want to show the, the sheer performance. I usually run Rise. That's what I do. Um, I like to I like to max out certain games that need like the PC crossovers, but for a mobile game like Call of Duty Mobile, you don't need it. I run Rise mode. Rise mode allows for fluctuation, less heat on the processor, everything like that. So it's great. But yes, yeah, so we have the haptic triggers looking freaking fantastic. Honestly the best i mean you, you can't get any similar a similar experience i mean this is this is as good as it gets uh so if you're a call of duty mobile game player you're not going to get even close to an experience with the samsung phone or the iphone i mean they the other ones might have done a little bit better in terms of other things like you know social stuff and all that crap but um i'm not too big into social stuff but yeah i want to show you guys the red magic game center where you can go ahead and do a bunch of uh different things like that okay so and there's, there's music that plays and stuff, but <clears throat> there's the staticky voice over it, and it just sort of, it ruins it. So, yeah. So, I'm sorry, but you'll get, and you'll hear all the sounds and stuff I'm talking about from all my Rap Magic videos, so do not worry, and I will put the sound for the video portion where, the, where it plays, but yeah. So, yeah, so Diablo mode, it's just giving you warning about the power consumption and stuff like that. So, we're going to go into playing a game. And if you want to see that mythic weapon that I have, all you have to do is actually link your account to an Activision account, and it gives you a freaking mythic weapon. I'm talking, it turns people into space like dust. It's crazy. I also have a special camo on it, but yeah, regardless, it is awesome. I have two, or legendary weapon. Mythic is a uh, hundred thousand bazillion dollars. So, no thanks. Um, <laughs> Yeah, looking good. Real focused over here. Nice. I think I um, fixed the focus, hopefully. Oh, 
Oh my God, I'm so sorry, guys. Holy shit. Yo, pass me. Please fucking pay attention. Oh my God, please pay attention. Oh my God, dude. Ugh. Yo, I'm so sorry, guys. Fuck, dude. And, oh my God, dude. Wait, do I do it? Do I fix it? No, I just block it partially. Okay. Yes, fuck yes. Okay, I finish it. Okay, or I fix it. Sweet. Okay, I was thinking like, holy shit, I didn't do that. Also, it's firing because the haptic triggers are being touched by the bottom of the Samsung phone. If you're wondering why that was that was firing. But yeah, as you can see, like the dots are barely noticeable. But yeah, you don't have any obstructed anything on the right. It is completely un, uh, completely unscathed. Like it looks great. Um, yeah, like I said, the haptic button is being touched. Um, sweet. So yeah, I tried to just move them around. As you can see, they're they're all they're all moving around great. Like there's no there's no real issues. Like they all they all perform well. Okay. The iPhone's graphics are going to look really good because I have um, I have ultra frame rate enabled on the um, phone on the bottom. So it does drop the graphics to medium just for, uh, I don't really know why. I wish you could do ultra and ultra graphics and just face the consequences on your phone. I think my phone on the bottom can handle it. I wish there was something we could do, but unfortunately you have to do a graphical sacrifice. <laughs> sacrifice. <laughs> But yeah, it does, but like this does look good. Like the iPhone graphics are looking good, man. Like that is some high quality stuff, man. If you were to show this to us years ago, um, so sorry about that. Um, lack of focus, man, hopefully. Yeah, it's a little better. Oh, we have auto fire on. That's why I was like, what is going on here, dude? Also, I'm playing versus bots. I think this is the noob game. They put you versus people close to your rank. I don't really know why um, some of these people just, like, they don't, I don't know why they don't kill me. It has to be bots. There's a lot of people that play Call of Duty Mobile. I think more people play Call of Duty Mobile, actually, than these might be real people, because more people play Call of Duty Mobile than any, than actually Call of Duty on the console. So, so that's something to keep in mind. I think it's pretty sweet. Yeah, this is what I was talking about with how smooth the iPhone feels. Like it just feels really great in the hand. That's something you're getting. Um, the phone will heat up over time. I don't think with this game, but if you play AAA games, which would be able to like, <laughs> Android doesn't have AAA games. <laughs> Somebody said that in the comments. Uh, pretty sure it does, man. Pretty sure you can stream them. And I'm pretty sure with higher specs on devices, you can get better quality. Um, but, you know, Apple's not slouching with the 8 gigs of RAM and the A17. A17 is a good chip, man. No lot. Like Apple does a good job. I, I'm excited to see what what happens when they actually put their, put their device at um, eight cores. I like. I really am excited to see that. Sorry about. Like the device is weirdly focusing on my fingers. It seems like or just anything but the screen. So it's not as um, blurry as it looks on the display. And I do apologize about that again. Um, but yeah, for the most part, hopefully it all looks freaking swell, my guy. Okay. So, yes, let's fucking go. There we go. And I also, I don't have like all this stuff enabled because this is the first time this is even being played. I think I do go into the settings because it is a bit annoying. Yeah, I was trying to close out of that just to kind of give you guys, that's a little bit of a demonstration of the app on the iPhone. The sound is good. Everything's good. You know what I mean? It looks good. So no worries there. And we're going to do this, uh, the Samsung phone next. We're going to make it look swell. You can see the lines, but that's just because of the high resolution. So don't worry. Um, you don't see that in person. Actually, the display looks very crisp. Um, I thought the iPhones looked good. Then I actually picked up the Samsung one and I'm like, wow, this is actually so much better. Oh yeah, because uh, and that did that because I clearly had joined and I didn't do anything and the the game just remained idle and I think the game ended, um, but yeah. So basically, that's why I disconnected because the game was over. Um, so of course, keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, Samsung does a good job of seemingly blocking out background noise. Um, and yeah, I, I like I'm watching the wavelength uh, thing on me actually doing the voice recording. So like I said before if you are just jumping late into the video at certain points um this is very much uh a solid voice recorder and if i stop talking there's no like background noise for the most part so it's good
Like this is stuff that Samsung, uh, and like, look, see, like it's solid, but you're not gonna have the super fast response. Like you'll have a fast response, don't get me wrong. And it's a nice, like these are, see, look, it, it runs well. If you're coming from some old Android phone, you're coming from an old iPhone, this is gonna be so much better. Like when I say this is not as good or the other ones are so much better, it doesn't mean that this is bad. 12 gigs of RAM is a lot of RAM on a phone. I remember thinking flagship devices had, when they had two or three gigs of RAM, it was like three gigabytes of RAM? Like, holy crap. I mean, at that point, you couldn't even, you couldn't run like console games like this. Even Call of Duty Mobile was a freaking dream by that, at that point. You know what I mean? That was, that was definitely a dream at that point. Oh, uh, the things also look better. Um, it's limited just to the quality of video that the iPhone 11's lenses um, can show. Um, so I apologize, that was my only other camera available, and that's why we're doing the dub over, because the microphone finally went to shit, which is actually pretty impressive, but yeah, there's that phone is is toast, like that thing is done. Um, <laughs> it's basically a brick now, I can't use it. So I have to buy a Handycam type camcorder fucking thing, um, and, and they're nice ones for pretty cheap, so that's going to be my video recording thing. But honestly, I like using phones. The nice thing about these phones too is if you want, so if you record video a lot, you want to go with the iPhone or the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Personally, I like recording with either, but you can actually pause uh, during videos with the Samsung phone. Like you can't do that with an iPhone. If you hit record, you can't pause mid video, but with Samsung, you can pause the video and remain. So if you are the type of person that does want to record phones like I do or whatever, I always preferably use a Samsung device. That personally is my absolute favorite. So yeah, just keep that in mind if you are the type of person that enjoys doing that. So yeah. As you can see, the game's going uh, really average. Um, it's going good, just because, <laughs> like, yeah, there's a, some of these are bots. Like, come on, you know what I mean? The, and okay, so I don't want you guys to think that I'm not appreciative of all these devices. When I say they're not as good, it doesn't mean, like, I, I'm reiterating this a hundred times because I just want you to know it doesn't mean the other devices are bad. These are all good phones. They're expensive phones. You're getting your money's worth. So whatever one you choose that you want, because it really is personal choice. Like I can give you specs all day, but if you don't care about specs, what is 24 gigs of RAM going to mean to you? If you do care, like I do, it's going to mean the world to me and I'm willing to compromise in other areas. But somebody that like is a big into FaceTime and just likes talking to their friends over FaceTime and then they lose FaceTime and then they have to convince their friends to download Google Meet and nobody's going to do that. Um, I mean, it's just kind of, or people have WhatsApp, which is nice. Like, you know what I mean? I pe think people in the world have WhatsApp and that's that's good. You know, it's not too popular in America, but it is popular elsewhere. Um, which So WhatsApp is pretty great. Um, you know what I mean? So it does allow for that. But everybody, like I said, you know, might enjoy like FaceTime or something like that. And, you know, you're, you're losing that out with that on this phone. You can still do great video recording quality. It's all good. But, you know, just, just everyone having the same thing and just jumping into what's already there. It, it, it's so much more convenient. So like I said, but I don't really care about that because how many people do I FaceTime? Literally no one. I don't FaceTime. I don't do anything like that. And so uh, reality of the situation is I just, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I, do, I, I don't care about that stuff. I'm not, clearly not super social. I was I was talking about it earlier, but the introvert of, like I said earlier, it's so true. Like the introvert phone is the motherfucking uh, Red Magic 9 Pro Plus. The middle of the road ambivert phone is um, the Samsung phone because you're getting stuff like great. Like if I could choose to watch a video, I would go towards the Samsung phone. If you're big into consuming, goodness gracious. Oh my God. Oh, geez. Oh, gosh. <laughs> goodness gracious. <laughs> Like a, a Midwestern mom. Good. Oh, geez. <laughs> I like how they came out natural. That's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so I just try to make the things we get in the back. But now this, this, my friends, is the powerhouse. The beast. The motherfucking legend, dude. This is... Oh, and I was looking for the... Where... I don't know why I didn't see this. I think I was just too tired. I was like looking for the info thing. And it's just right in the middle of my screen. And I think I just was... Like, I swear to you guys, I was looking at that last night, I did not find that. But it shows the FPS. As you can see, consistently 121, 119, 121, 120. Like, all that. And you can see, like, battery percentage, battery temperature. I think. But, like, one... Uh, I don't know what the um, time is. Or, I guess it's, like, how long I've been playing or doing stuff. I don't... I don't really know what that is, but... 
<coughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm just making sure everything's good. But yeah, like, look. So just look look at how fast everything is. Like, it's just, it's so, it's so butter. And like, the graphics aren't going to look as good. And that's just because it's on medium quality graphics, but ultra frame rate. So it's staying at 120. And that to me is if you're somebody who plays a lot, you want high, you want a fast frame rate. That's something that is is really great. I miss a lot, I know. I lucked out, honestly. I just kind of, um, I kind of guessed. This is easily by far my favorite phone, though. That's why I'm quiet and not talking about other things. Um, this is easily my favorite phone. And if in the middle of this recording uh, it cuts out sometimes, it's because I'm trying to get rid of... This is a nail gun, by the way. It's, it's so sick. They have a freaking nail gun, dude. But, I mean, that looks good. The reload, like, even medium graphics look good on this phone. Like, the color, accuracy, all that stuff looking great. Um, I honestly don't... Uh, although, you can really tell color accuracy with the other thing. But, um, but yeah, man. I mean, the phone's good, obviously. Um, it really is down to your own preference. Like, what do you value? Do you value gaming? Do you value video watching? Or and the other ones do either. The other ones do the other ones. Like, there's not. It's not like you don't. It's not like the other ones don't work. You get what I'm saying? Like, they clearly it clearly works just fine and it works well. You get what I'm saying? But the best, if you want the best in certain things, Samsung for the video watching, iPhone for the social stuff, and this one for the gaming. So it really is up to you. Um, they are pretty boss looking phones. I'm going to try to snap this as a thumbnail um, because this one is actually pretty badass. I'm not going to lie. Hopefully it picks up this as a thumbnail because it shows the beasts looking great. They are legends, legendary phones. Can't go wrong with either of them. Um, and yeah, it re and so I really just, you know, yeah. Here I am explaining what I probably just said. Um, but yeah, and, and there are obviously other colors, but I think that like the the Dark Knight black and then the um, aluminum, you know, what's funny is it's nice that that like these two copy the shit out of each other, but you just, it's either, oh, and then the, sorry guys, the other feature being the S Pen. I show some S Pen stuff. Um, I, I completely, even even doing this voice recording, I forgot about that. I was like, and I don't, I don't show everything with the S Pen. There's other videos on YouTube about the S Pen and all the detailed capabilities and things like that. But I'm just going to show you what I use them for. Um, and yeah, and uh, the two features I really like using that are really helpful and useful because I do get people that speak, you know, Portuguese and uh, Spanish and I'm okay with Spanish. But other than that, I'm just, it's whatever. Um, and so the camera quality might not look the best, but it is because um, it is a bit out of focus. And um, yeah, so. Oh, and then I didn't actually take any photos with them. Um, reason being is that there are so many videos on YouTube I that like show in-depth comparisons of camera pictures and stuff like that and like the camera the cameras are going to take good good photos good videos everything like that i know i didn't cover that and I, I do apologize about not covering that but that to me is just something that's not very important it might be important to you but as you saw everything works well they all have good front-facing cameras the only one that's a bit shoddy is the the one with uh the red magic one um but of course this has the pen and then hello tom so yeah, sorry about not showing the cameras. I I just did it because they're all the okay. Basically, it's the same thing. You're gonna get crazy zoom with Samsung, um, and I in the full review I do cover the camera, but they're not that much different than last year's. Okay, in my S23 Ultra review, I have a um, camera video, uh, like a part where I go over the camera. It's the same thing, and I have a camera test or I go over the camera in the full review of the of the uh, Red Magic phone and with the iPhone, I'll do a review and um, that'll probably get 200 views <laughs> or, or maybe 50. <laughs> Just the only ones that really generate views for me are the Red Magic one because every 
every area is just saturated. You get what I'm saying? Like, and everybody just goes to Marquez Brownlee, which is great because that guy is a freaking legend. And if you want, like, that's the thing. If you want top quality, high quality editing and stuff like that, and the music, the transitions, all the fun, like, go here. There's actually, and if you want somebody with just straight up more phones and less detail and Red Magic, go with Flossy Carter. That guy is awesome. That guy is one of the reasons why I can actually feel confident just straight up recording and talking um, and not editing because that guy is really awesome and he just does a good job. So here's the translation that I wanted. You don't do it with the pen actually. I think you just do it with your finger. But yeah, so like the, but the, the biggest use for me is like the coloring or like the signing thing. So if I have to sign some papers or something, um, yeah. And then, yeah, so of course, like, you know, it translates over to Spanish. Um, and you can change the language. And I think that's great. It's really, it's awesome that that is natively on the phone. You don't need a third-party app. But if you do need a third-party app that does that, go to Google Lens. Google Lens does the same thing. And anybody on an Android phone can get it. I think you can also, I think there is some translate thing on an iPhone. I'm not entirely sure. But um, but yeah, regardless, that's the thing. So once again, apologies about the cameras. I did go over just the quality, but taking photos, it's they're roughly the same. You're not going to get that much of a different experience. I just wanted to go ahead and kind of go into these little details that other people probably haven't gone into because I know you can find a camera video for the Red Magic phone and you can, you can find similar videos. So, yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, I'm just looking at it a little bit in detail. I want to show you guys like just the curved edges and stuff. I've mentioned it before, but um, yeah, it looks pretty decent. It's just the iPhone 11, guys. Um, you know what I mean? I got to get a better better camera. But yeah, it does feel nice. Like the transition, like I was talking about, um, this is something that I just just noticed. Um, so in terms of weight, the iPhone feels the heaviest. The, the Samsung feels like it's in the middle and the lightest is the Red Magic one. That's a screen protector on there, by the way. It is way more flush. Um, I personally never run screen protectors. I started to do a case because of the phone screen breaking when uh, the phone slipped off the edge on my Red Magic 8S Pro Plus, which is funny. You know, I think that the Red Magic 9 Pro looks awesome, but the 10 Pro is just going to look even better. And it's crazy. Like, if you really want a company that's actually changing things up and isn't just giving you a repeat of last year, just look at the distinct design differences between devices. Like, like this phone looks completely different than last year's. So you really get an actual genuine refresh when it comes to phones with the Red Magic phone. You get a you get a consistent bump, and I know they're working hard to make sure that their cameras look good and everything like that. And the Face ID isn't working because it's it's my um, it's my wife's phone. So um, so yeah. So we're getting close to the end of the video, um, which is pretty freaking nice. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully you guys are getting a good look at the phones. Hopefully I was able to cover everything you uh, wish. I apologize about the cameras a hundred times. So you guys don't scold me at the end of the video. I uh, appreciate the percentage of people that sticks around. I think it's like three or 4% of you still watch the videos to the end. So shout out to the people that watch the videos to the very end. Don't leave within five minutes. So thank you. Appreciate you guys very much. And um, all the time you put into um, watching my videos, man, you guys are you guys are the reason why this channel keeps going. And I really wanted to shout out to everybody. Shout out to people who have uh, subscribed to my channel prior, even if you aren't consistent, uh, if you aren't continuing. There are two people that have subscribed. So if you do want to support my channel, it's a dollar a month. Just uh, hit subscribe. But um, even just your views help because I'm still making about. I think like a dollar a day maybe, which is pretty nice. So yeah, it's pretty good. Um, and you, if you, that's to be encouragement for you. If you feel like you won't be able to make money off YouTube, just put in time, put in effort, man. You know, grind out videos. Like just keep posting videos. Doesn't matter what the video is. Little, even if you don't get a lot of views, let's say you get 200 per video. You do um, five videos. I mean, that's a thousand views and that's money. You know what I mean? You have to get to a pretty high amount of watch hours and stuff, but um, the way that I did that is I just record long videos like this, an hour, 44 minutes, and it just does watch hour time because 
not everyone's watching to the end, but it allows for people who stick long. It adds up quick. So, so that's what Are I did. Are you threatening me? Yeah, so later, guys. Thanks for watching.